Meow. It's a plane piloted by Coes. These intros are getting weirder. <laughs> well, I, I can't think of it. You haven't done one, so... Well, I think, actually, no, you might have done one. Yeah, no, I have. It's the one where there's loads of silence before I realised that I was meant to be doing it. Yep. And that's all staying in. <laughs> yep, because I edited it and I made sure it was still there. Can I apologise now for um, sounding the way I do? Because uh, I was born like it. No, um, I'm suffering with hay fever at the minute. And I'm a little bit bunged up, so I'll try to keep sniffing and snotting down to a minimum. Yeah, that pretty much sets the theme for the whole summer of recording, doesn't it? (laughs) Yeah, it's, you know, as I said to you before, it's a good job I don't have a job where I'm constantly surrounded by grass, plants, pollen, flowers, and other such things. Yeah. And, yeah, you shouldn't, you probably shouldn't be a gardener. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, it was easy. Anyway. But you could be... A soup, a superhero? No, no, no. That is not a segue. <laughs> I'll tell you who does like a bit of gardening is Omija Lily. Yep, who's <laughs> who's in Stanley's Lucky Man. <laughs> that surprised me. I wasn't expecting him to pop up. Really? I, I'm i not that surprised when he turns up because he's in a lot of stuff. But yeah, no, I didn't. He's in Gladiator. Yeah. He has his balls fondled by Oliver Reed. And he's in some other stuff too. Like he's actually a pretty solid actor. As long as he's playing a, a fat, slightly bald Iranian man. What a stretch. I know. Um, I think he should bring out a line of different pick lilies so then he could have Omija Lily's pick lily That would be incredible. <laughs> he's in Pirates of the Caribbean. Anyway, we should get on with the shows. We're actually... Oh, he's in video games. No way. He's in GTA 4. Who's he voice? He plays Yusuf Amir in The Ballad of Gay Tony. That sounds about right. I don't think I ever played Ballad of Gay Tony. Yeah, it was a really good expansion. As well as the Lost and Damned. But anyway, back to... Lucky Man. Oh, we're on Lucky Man first, are we? Well, yeah, you started talking about homage I so we might as well. Okay, hang on then. Okay. That sounded dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wrote in capitals a lot for this. That bodes well. That bodes well. Right, go on then. Start us off. What is it? And why is it start with Stan Lee's Lucky Man? I think it's because there's other things called Lucky Man. Oh, okay. It's purely administrative. Like the Avengers title. I think it, it's here. to tie it to Stan Lee rather than Marvel. Right, that was my first question when I started watching it. Uh, is it connected to the Marvel Universe that we're currently no. enjoying? I didn't think it was. Yeah, because otherwise it'd have been, been a bit more like... Do you remember that time that Thor came and fucked up Greenwich? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that time that Thor got on the tube and got to Greenwich? On that line that you can't do that on. Hey, hey, don't be dissing the MCU proper. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is completely unrelated. And it seems to me more of just like Stanley went, I want to do something else <laughs> for, for a, a, I don't know how long this took to film, but a bit. I <laughs> just want to do something else for a bit. That isn't superheroes. <laughs> well, it kind of is. Yeah, I suppose. But, like, it is just someone who's really quite lucky. And I suppose. Right, right at the end of the episode, it just goes, Yeah, no, but there's a price. And it's just like, He's like, Oh, I didn't die. Didn't hit. Didn't get crushed by those bricks. And then it's just like, Oh, my daughter's been hit by a car. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck. I forgot about that. <laughs> I did. I, it's been a couple of days since I saw it, and yeah, I wasn't exactly concentrating too hard. Um, so he gets the powers of enormous luck through a bracelet. What's given to him by someone? Yeah, Eve. I think. I Is think that it was her name? Eve? Eve. Yeah. Okay, that'll do. I've written some really, really strange notes. 
Like Gorgeous. one of them just says, "Nice guns." Were were there some nice guns in in this episode? I don't actually remember there being any guns in this episode. Oh well, didn't. Oh no, there were. There was no. They, yeah, they shot on a boat for a bit. There was some boating. <laughs> some boating. Some general boatage. Um, uh, this is going to be a recurrent theme for the episode today, but I. I like the concept of it. I just don't think it was executed particularly well. Like, it's it's almost a bit too convenient that he really likes gambling, and then this woman goes, "Here, have this." And he's yeah, like, oh, become okay. like the god of gambling. <laughs> yeah, I think. But I... then, if he did, what if he got that enormous luck? Why doesn't he just pay Freddie back straight away? Because that's the thing. He has three. He's given three days to repay Freddie, who's a big. Chinatown gangster, gangster yeah. chap who doesn't necessarily last the whole episode at which point I sort of thought well what are we still doing here then that's the end of the story isn't it I guess maybe it must must not be well because he has to solve it's his case like that death is his case then to solve of course because then he's yeah his partner is it knows that he went and saw Freddy before he died and that's a bit. Well, I think it's because he texted him in the morning to say like, "I'm gonna bring you money," and yes, then she was just was like, it. "Why were you bringing him money?" And he was like, "I'm a gambler. I have a problem." But yeah, no. Like, the thing it seems really uh, luck seems like quite a upbeat sort of soft fuzzy sort of show. Like a show based around luck would just be like My Little Pony. Rather than <laughs> gritty London cop has gambling debts, drinks a lot, sleeps around. <laughs> like that's not really luck to me. I don't know. I suppose, but, the, the, well, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if the representation of the actual luck is particularly clear apart from in the casino. Oh, and no, the black cat thing. Oh, metaphors. yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how I felt about that. I was a bit like, mm, really? That's a little bit on the nose. But still, what are you going to do? I think I've seen, like, there's a bit from, like, later where he's starting to sort of, like, luck's coming, like, he sort of gets it, and he just sort of, like, he's in a, he's in a car crash, but he just lets go of the wheel. As if to, like, just let it all, like, sort itself out. And it does. What, later in the show? Like, or not, in not in this episode. Right. Uh, okay. Later in say, the show. I don't remember that. Um, I did get ridiculously ins- excited when I sort of thought that he was walking down Shaftesbury Avenue and then outside Forbidden Planet. I was, oh, I've been there. I've been to that shop. That's the thing with anything set in London, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But anything set in London, I do just spend the whole time just looking for bits I recognise. <laughs> But I, don't know, I feel like maybe a police officer is the wrong lead character, maybe. What, to have massive good fortune? Yeah, I think Th- it's who just... Who would you it's... rather have huge luck then? Like a homeless chap or something? No, I, no, I don't know. Like, just a different setting, because you see a lot of, like, there's a lot of police shows and drama and stuff. Well, again, we got another one that we get to exactly. in a minute. So, I did feel like this whole you know police procedural of it was a bit. Mm, it wasn't. It Some wasn't of it felt a bit gripping, heavy, was it? Yeah, it no. It just like all the him and like his chief not liking each other just felt a bit like. Okay. Show me more lucky stuff. Yeah, I didn't really care particularly about anyone apart from Clayton because, it, well, it's Jimmy Nesbitt. And, and you're meant to. He's eminent. Like if you don't care about him, you're not watching the right show. <laughs> yeah. And this has got a series two on the way, hasn't it? Yep. D- so how much of this have you watched? Uh, this episode and maybe another one, but I don't know which one. Okay. So you weren't particularly. Interested no, I wasn't. In well, I watched the uh, not the first what episode first. 
So I was just like, oh, maybe I'll watch it at some point, and then um, never did. Pretty much. I've written down here uh, the word luck, revolving door, bollocks. And I seem to remember there's a metaphor about how luck is a revolving door or something, and I, that really pissed me off. I really didn't like the writing in it. I'm going to have to Google that because I don't know. Yeah, it's Eve says, you know, luck's a revolving door. You just need to know when it's your turn to walk through. Yeah, that that line really annoyed me. Is it because she's just given him all the luck in the world? <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, sure, it doesn't matter then. If he's got all the, you know, it's just, just the ride, this, that line as a, as a piece of dialogue. Do you know what? Shut up. Don't want to hear from you. And I've also written Ben. In capitals, and I don't remember why. Who's Ben? I don't think there is a character called Ben. Well, why? Why have I written the word Ben? I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. I can't. I can't think of a reason that you'd have written that down. <laughs> I. I really want to know. Why did I? Uh, do you think he's going to end up? Do you think he'd end up getting back with his wife? Um. Oh, that was something. Th- their their argument seemed to sort of spawn out of nothing. Like when he, she's like, "Oh, um, she's been hit by a thing," and he says he makes some offhand comment, and she just goes, "Oh, we're going to do this now." And I was like, "I I didn't think it was a big deal that comment." Yeah, and no, she just starts. Like laying into him, just like I'm not gonna lose the house, and it's like, no, he's lucky now. <laughs> you won't lose the house. He's gonna do the gambling good now, and he's like, I'm trying to stop, and it's like you aren't. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, but two days ago, you were drunk in a casino gambling. <laughs> like, that doesn't strike me. And so far, this show's been on for an hour. You've been in a casino for about twenty minutes yeah. of an hour. <laughs> You spend a third of your time in a casino. You're not trying to stop gambling. Oh, You're just uh, better at it now. Yeah, he's. I don't. I didn't particularly like his character that much either. I don't really feel like. I don't really like anyone in this show. Uh, I think maybe, maybe they get better as it goes on. Like they have to. <laughs> yeah, that is. I suppose that is the problem with the format of how we've decided to do these. Is like we look at a snapshot, which is essentially the pilot episode. Is where you go. This is the kind of general idea. We haven't quite got all the nuances and everything sorted out, with some um, exceptions. Like twenty four, I pretty much felt like got it spot on the first time. Um, this one is just sort of, but well, because we watch them so disjointedly. It could have a bad first episode, but the second episode could be absolutely brilliant and be the thing that carries you through. But I don't think I'll ever watch it because I, I just didn't care. That was It was for really frustrating because I like stuff that's set in London, I like Jimmy Nesbitt, and I like Superpowers so, and detective shows. So I, I was yeah, really disappointed I think, I think, that I didn't like this more. Yeah, I think having calling it a Superpowers a bit... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, at the minute, it it's... almost doesn't matter that he's got the whole luck thing. It, it's just a procedural thing, and the 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 almost the law of the the luck bracelet, you know, being behind it, it just sort of doesn't matter at this point. So the, that's obviously going to be explored, I'd imagine. Yeah, I'd be more. I'd quite be quite interested to see probably like the history of it and how it actually helps him in like. If it, he just uses it to help in his job, or if he uses it to help in like the rest of his life, and also what, so I imagine the consequences get worse, like as he goes through. Like he saved yeah. his car, and his kid got hit by a car. Well, that's the, the anything where you know. Imagine what happens if he uses it to dodge a bullet. His poor daughter. Oh, oh the bullet! <laughs> <laughs> Rebound off six walls, and then hit his daughter in so the like nose. A bullet fired on Mars. <laughs> 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 hit his daughter. Um, well, yeah. I the the thing is, you generally when someone has, it, it's the whole Midas thing, isn't it? It's a morality tale for, oh, you know, if you could control all this luck, it would 
you know you'd become corrupted and bad things would happen to you and you have to face the consequences of it that's sort of where i feel like this is going to go until eventually he you know it, it becomes a curse don't we see someone who that's it the first thing you see is the chap who jumps off the roof because he can't take it well, presumably because yeah. he can't take having immense luck and having you know the whole success and everything because it's going to have cost him too much like they say it comes with a price so it's the sort of the morality warning isn't it yeah it looks like it gets more interesting I think just the cases get more interesting a bit as well let's see the trouble is I'm watching uh, or I have watched Hannibal and True Detective recently and um, those detective shows the things that they have to investigate and things they discover are so dark and so gruesome that it's, it takes a lot for me to then think, oh yeah, this is pretty bad. When in uh, Hannibal there's a series of bodies who are buried shallow enough to... to grow mushrooms. Yeah, that really freaked me out. Yeah, have you finished Hannibal now? No, I've just started series two. Like last week I watched the first one of series two. And it is... Oh, there's some good ones in series two as well. Yeah, I do really like that show. Yeah, it's it's such a good show. It really puts like a high, like sets like a, such a high bar for like crime shows. Yeah, because at the heart of it, it's a crime show that just happens to have a cannibal in it. Well, and I think a lot of the the psychology of the thing, and it's quite you know when you see Will having his dreams and everything it's very artistic and quite almost intellectual and almost it's quite challenging actually i think just having you know the stag appearing out of nowhere and these visual clues of you know that are supposed to denote what someone's feeling i i th- i thought i was actually surprised at how sort of arty it was but that makes me enjoy it all the more but we're not talking about all this week no we're not are we do, we are doing it at some point, aren't we? Surely. Um, yeah, I'm struggling to find something to put it with. That's the issue. Uh, okay, fair enough. We'll find out later. Um, did a little, what else have I? Re- oh, uh, treadmill bants. That was funny. Yeah, no, I liked that. Although it did not be so. Uh, was it Clayton? He's interrogating someone who happens to be on a treadmill at the time. He handcuffs him to the treadmill and just. Keeps getting what annoyed to run me? Fast, fast. Why did he just the... jump and put his yeah, legs down? Why did, yeah, his feet why on the his... side. Yeah, that annoyed. I I know exactly what you meant. I was just like, <laughs> as soon as I said, I was like, why did it annoy you? And then you started. I was like, oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, I just have just put my feet on the side bits. <laughs> like you have to if it's going too fast. That would have been funny. He just does that and goes, "What are you doing, Harry? I'm just tra- chained to a treadmill now." He's like, "Oh, okay, fair enough." <laughs> He's going, "Well, you, you're doing wonders for my heart, Harry, but I'm not telling you anything." <laughs> I mean, I. There are some things that I liked about the show, like, I think I liked all the sort of de- detecting, detective stuff. The I didn't e- really, I didn't really care that much about the luck stuff. Yeah, because it doesn't seem to be what, that important. It's yeah. just like a tack on bit. It's like, oh, hey, <laughs> like I'm luck. But again, that's probably going to come to the forefront in future episodes. I think there will be more. There will probably be more stuff about. One, probably people trying to get the bracelet. Yes. Like, quite hints that, because she was just like, I was meant to give it to someone else, but I didn't, so you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I enjoyed seeing the chase um, when they are in the hospital. She's sitting there watching the chase, because that was another favourite show of mine. But what did you think about the boat chase at the end? Because I didn't think I, it, it was great. I, no, because... Editing was a bit higgledy-piggledy. And we've seen blockbuster boat chases down the Thames. So yeah, why bother? Unless, you, unless you're going to one-up Bond, which, <laughs> if Bond does one thing well, it's action. It's a boat chase. <laughs> yeah, so... It's not really... And, like, he caught up... I felt he caught up too quickly considering they look to be in identical boats. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he somehow got lucky. And was <laughs> we... just, was somehow going faster. <laughs> yeah, the other guy didn't have it on full chat. 
<laughs> he just looks down. Oh, we've been going at seventy five percent this whole time. No wonder he's it's like the Fast it. and Furious thing where he just changes. Like there's just oh shit, I forgot I had twelve gears. <laughs> <laughs> Better pull another one. Do you have gears on a boat? No. I was going to say. Do you but pull, in the Fast and, in the first? Fast in the Fast and Furious, you would have gears on a boat. <laughs> oh, well, Fast and Furious, you'd have gears on a treadmill. Exactly, and you'd be handcuffed to it. I know, oh, I'm getting some, confused. <laughs> something else I quite liked is right at the start when you first meet is Mrs. I can't remember her name. Uh, <laughs> what's her name? Anna. That's it. Like they seem to get on quite well, and it is quite nice to have, you know, characters who are separated who are still amicable and polite to each other. And he's like, look, yeah, yeah you know, how's it all going? You you doing all right and everything? And I like, oh, I like how he just drops nice. like the bombshell on everyone, and it's like. Happy anniversary, by the way. <laughs> it's just like, oh, that's kind of, that's kind of sad. <laughs> just made me think of that line in space where he says, "You can't dangle the carrot of possible reconciliation in front of me while riding some other donkey." <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sort of all done for Lucky Man. It was a bit meh. Like, you know, I'm glad I watched it, but. I think it has it further. has potential. It well, just needed. To, I think it just needed to like I don't know pick up a bit faster. Yeah. Like for me, I I don't have as much time as I used to have to just pump hours into shows until they get good. Yeah. Like I sort of now I just wanted to see like a first episode and just be like, yep, I'll watch that. Which is what the ideal pilot should do. Really. Yeah. Well, because they're meant to be there to convince a network to sign off on it. Uh, more so Why? in America, it's that, isn't it? Um, over I here, think also, I think if a... you tack on Stan Lee's name to the start of something, it it's sell. getting greenlit. Yeah, exactly. It was, yeah, it's quite cynical marketing, almost, but still, you know. I mean, and there was the cameo, yeah, which, was... which did make me realise that I don't think Jessica Jones or Daredevil have had Stan Lee cameos. If they have, they've been very, very well disguised. I, I don't remember him being in any of. I, I st- know, still Agents haven't finished Daredevil. Did. But as far as I'm aware, you're listening to a man looking something up. Yep. <laughs> it's like yeah. Well, it's our podcast. We'll do what we want. Okay. Apparently, he's in. Apparently, he's quite well hidden. In Jessica Jones. Oh, is he? He's a picture on a wall. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Son of a bitch. He gets everywhere, that man. Okay, now I'm looking for the Daredevil one. <laughs> Have you seen Big Hero 6? Because he's got a great one in that. Yeah, he's just a portrait. Oh, it's the same. He's just a picture on the wall in that one as well. Oh, the same picture? Yeah, like a old retired police officer sort of thing. Oh, okay. Oh, that'd be cool. Sorry for sniffing there. I just ugh, I don't feel great. Um, right. So, lucky man. Done. Yeah. I mean, I'll probably watch it at some point when I've run out of other things to watch. That's the trouble. Is I now have so many things that I want to get through, and just not enough time. And trying to do a hundred films this year. And what we're doing is going through and just, like, trying to find good shows. Yeah. And if they're good enough, it'll just be like, shit, (laughs) gotta watch that now. To be fair, there's not many that we've done that I've watched, that I've continued to watch. Like, I think the only one is 24. And even 24, I've watched series one. I've got series two and three, and I haven't watched those. Yeah. I mean, some of them, some of them I... Had already watched anyway. Yeah, too. So I'm Me not too. really counting them. Him and her, like I've watched so many times. Penny oh yeah, I've watched. I've watched it twice since we did that podcast. So. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I think I have as well? Uh, Inside number nine. They aren't doing a new series till the autumn, which is kind of a shame. But yeah, no, that is it. Even Dracula, I've got the DVD here. How much it? Entourage. That's something I should watch. Yeah, you should watch all of Yeah, I mean, I watch, I still watch The Flash. Uh, him and her, obviously. Jessica Jones. I might watch Supergirl now that it's going to the CW. I should probably. I mean, Sky One. Dead. 
and Asian Car Day. They're not doing any more Asian Car, so yeah, that's kind of a shit. I did enjoy that. I mean, I didn't watch any more than the first one, but I did enjoy. It. I don't remember you mean the Apocalypse at all. Like I remember every other show that we've done, but I do not remember. It's probably for the Apocalypse. best, and obviously Spooks. I watched all the Spooks. Yeah. Okay, but on to... should we? Shall we? Powers. <laughs> right, my first note. Is this a piss take? My second note. Eddie Izzard? <laughs> I think... With this, is there another one that has missed... Sort of... Almost the time to come out. Like, I think this would have been a lot better in... An earlier... Two th- like, the earlier 2000s. Yeah. But could have been worse it well could have been but it could have been a lot better like I really struggle with Eddie Izzard in um, serious dramas because to me Eddie Izzard was one of the most important stand up comedians when I was a kid and I, I can't divorce myself from him being anything other than that, which is terrible, because I know that as you know, actors, you, you're supposed to, you know, be able to watch them do many, many different things and still be like, oh, yeah. yeah have obviously. you seen him in Hannibal yet? <laughs> See, I thought he was in Hannibal, but I can't remember. Him. Yes, 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 I have. He plays that serial killer. Yeah, yeah. And in that, I I bought him a bit more in Hannibal than I did in this. This was just. Ugh. I think. Um, the writing's probably better in Hannibal. Yes, definitely. This it's felt, a bit felt like, like heroes. I think maybe what it is is it's a social commentary on how many superhero films and TV shows there are at the moment. Or it's just a badly written superhero show. But because it's but like, superheroes it's in, it's in, an it, in, it gets greenlit because superheroes and it's are huge. interesting. And also certainly need to make something now. <laughs> Oh, of course, yeah, this is on the... On the PlayStation. PlayStation. Which is another of my few notes for this. Is There was a line that I, someone said that I had to rewind and rewatch three times because I wasn't sure what she was saying. She says, I'm at the PlayStation. And I was, hang on, wait. what? And I played it again. I'm at the PlayStation. I... I just don't understand. And it took me about four times to realise she was saying, oh, police station. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, well, I know this is made by Sony, so is this a weird thing where they say, oh, look, ha, 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 we did a thing. Yeah. yeah. Have they made one of their consoles into a place? Like a reference thing. Um, Okay, so, yeah, this is the story of all about how Christian Walker, who was a superhero known as Diamond, is a detective in the power division. Yeah, I'm starting to remember it now because I wasn't in the greatest mental state because I fell asleep watching this. But um, I liked the bit where he got his mate got thrown against the pillar and all the blood went. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, I like the bit at the end where he jumps off a building. <laughs> oh, and f- realizes that he can't. <laughs> and fly. It's just like, uh, it's just like, sorry, and it's like, no, she already jumped off, like. You saying sorry? Like sorry, I couldn't stop you doing what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> sorry that while you'd fallen, I decided that jumping after you, I can't actually do much about it. Um, he is far too aggressive. I what, really, Morgan, really like, don't like him. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Like, I can't take him seriously yeah. as a well, what would have been a power. Like, I can't imagine him saving people because <laughs> one he doesn't seem very good at it because <laughs> <laughs> the first time you meet him his mate gets battered I thought it was going to be like some big secret that he was like a power working against with like working against the other powers yeah and that sounds more interesting that, like, that, have... that is an issue when you can come up with something that's more interesting than what the TV show actually is yeah, and especially because it's me as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what was he going to say? No, what I mean is, by saying he's too aggressive, is that it just makes him so 
unlikable. And you're supposed to sort of be like, oh, this guy, you know, he he used to have these He's made it like a likable and... rogue, almost, yeah. rather than just a dick. But that's the trouble, is I'm just like, well, do you know what? I just don't care about you. Yeah, what I, I'd really like to see is one of these sort of superhero shows that's just like, that makes you sort of think that you're watching the good guy, but it just turns out to be a supervillain. But they don't realise it. I like st- I love stuff like that. Um, well, on that sort of vein, it did remind me of a much less gruesome, less violent and less dark and depressing and cynical version of The Boys which is the series of comics by Garth Ennis, which is about, you know, it's probably the most realistic interpretation of what superheroes would actually be like because in the comics, all the superheroes are completely corrupt, completely criminal, with no regard for anyone else's well-being. And in his version of events, it's superheroes who actually caused their version of 9-11. That doesn't sound far off what would probably happen. Yeah, well, this is what I think. So it's like, you know, all the corporations have, uh, you know, um, jumped on the bandwagon of having superheroes and suddenly they're funding superhero teams just to get advertising, that sort of thing. It's very cynical. I mean, to like... And that would... To some end, like, this is approaching that a bit. Yeah, it's not a with million like how miles away. famous they are, like the Powers app or the Powers that used to be app. Or... But at the same time, it seems to have, like, almost, con- like, it seems to conflict with itself. It's like, I want to be a superhero show, but at the same time, I want to be dark and gritty. Well, I don't but it- I don't think that would be impossible to do, but I just don't think they no, do I it think- particularly well. Yeah, I think they've gone, for that way, they've gone too, like, they're coming at it from, like, two different sides. And it's almost like there are two different teams of artists working on it. Yeah, it falls and they between... Just, and they don't talk to each other falls between two two stores doesn't it because there's one side which is potentially very dark and but there's another side which is quite light and um fun almost like yeah. all the stuff with like the wannabe power kids like that feels like a sort of like oh cool <laughs> like it's just kids but it just it just doesn't gel that tone quite right i don't think yeah and i i'm still not really sure what Eddie Izzard's character is because I got the impression that he was a cannibal sort of like a power cannibal yeah he's like Sila almost like but Sila who actually does eat brains yeah but then they lobotomized him over constantly. and over again yeah but I don't understand <laughs> like why does that fix him <laughs> well because he's a lobotomy well it, it, he's supposed to be like really really he's supposed to have like Wolverine style regeneration isn't he so was, if they keep killing his brain it probably takes it a bit longer oh yeah to repair that makes sense I, ne- I didn't really caught on to the fact that he was meant to be like a Wolverine style character I've I was just, just like, I thought he could read just, it <laughs> I thought he, yeah I thought he could just absorb other people's characters powers you mean well uh, characters he seems to have stolen Christian Walker's character <laughs> and just left a shell of a dick. <sighs> but I don't know, maybe this maybe this gets better too. But I'd hope so because I I re- I do like the idea of it. I just I don't like him, which is a massive issue. Yeah, I I th- I almost think that it does just need to be darker. Yeah, it, well, it, the trouble is then, it's like, well, now you're just too close to the boys, so you might as well do the boys. I wonder if there's any plans to do the boys. I think there is. There's talk of, um, because they've, they're, that's what The Walking Dead has done, brilliantly, because it it's so successful, it's made the way for all these comic book shows to now be able to be made on TV, so that's why we're now getting Preacher, and, um, you know, there was Constantine, that sort of thing. Um... I think Constantine could have suffered from the same thing as this because, like, you're not meant to really like Constantine. He's not really a hero. No. He just turns up and sort of does the right thing, but in a not very the right way. 
I never actually watched Constantine, and I keep meaning to. It honestly is really good, and there's not that much of it to watch because it got cancelled. That's because they did. Kind of a shame. I don't like it when stuff I like gets cancelled. Yeah, but the character isn't cancelled. Oh, uh, apparently they're not doing. Oh no, um, the same guys who developed Preacher are apparently doing um, the boys. So it's Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, and Eric Kripke. And apparently Cinemax has greenlit it. So we are at some point going to be getting a TV version of The Boys. Which I'm looking forward to because The Boys is probably my favourite series of comics. I mean, in terms of like... Oh, I'm just trying to think like where this show could go. Because it's just good guys versus bad guys again. Yeah. Well... I would have been more interested to see just like... Like this world without like a full on story it just needs to sort of go these are powers this is what they do this is the police who are trying to like keep up with them and also stop the bad ones so it's something almost like um Sin City-esque almost, like almost little like story sort of a combination of Sin City and maybe a bit of Civil War sort of like maybe more like the comic Civil War where you've got like almost just too many heroes yeah the trouble is, while watching this the whole time, I was just thinking, well, these these particular powers and, you know, the the juxtaposition of, like, real world with the superheroes, I feel like it just reminded me of how good the first series of Heroes was. I mean, admittedly, you know, Heroes came out at a time where it was believed that people didn't want to see people in spandex shoes and spandex and shiny armour and suits and that's and it turns out we did yeah <laughs> weird that isn't it it's like the X-Men wearing leather that was always a weird one yeah but this is sort of uh, it's, but there's, so, there's I don't know, it's coming almost who's... from like it's like all the heroes and powers in it and stuff are like I suppose it does touch on like maybe a darker side of heroes where they're talking about like he's just like oh yeah no we just used to go sort of go out and get fucked up because we were superheroes and that's what we did like why all of his memories seem to be from like just getting fucked up rather than like being like oh no I made genuine connections with my hero friends yeah I've only just remembered how annoying I find that Callista girl like she's really whiny she reminds me of um oh fuck what's her name the girl in Scott Pilgrim but like a shitter version of her um, I can't remember. I haven't actually seen all of Scott Pilgrim. But, yeah, no, I mean, it's just... She's just obsessed with heroes. Basically. It's not really anything. God, she was annoying. <laughs> she really wound me up, just being whingy and... No, I will, I will. Uh, just that sort of... Oh, that was the default. Ah, uh, it's probably because she's a Disney kid. <laughs> Is she? Yeah, High School Musical, oh. all three of them. Oh, that'd be wild. I did think that Charlotte Copley. This is one of my other. I have got very few notes, but another one of those. He looks a bit like CM Punk. Don't, Who does? Uh, Charlotte Copley in Powers, uh, Walker. Ah, uh, that's it. I I really don't have it. I just see, he he reminded me of someone, but I couldn't remember who. Was it, um, CM Punk? No, because I'm not as into wrestling as you are. Um, no, I don't know who he reminds me of. Because now I've seen a picture of him, it's it's gone. <laughs> He sort of like Dylan the way McDermott. he looked in the. Sh- he looks like Dylan McDermott, who was in American Horror Story. He sort of looked a bit like a dark haired Constantine, almost. Well, like Keanu Reeves. No, proper <laughs> Constantine. I do need to watch that. It's on my Amazon Video thing. After this, we watch Vikings, and then maybe, maybe start. What the film Const? I haven't seen the film Constantine. No, no, the TV show. You haven't seen it? Oh, the film's actually quite good. I really feel like I don't want to watch after watching the show because yeah, I feel like I would be disappointed <laughs> um, I did like the theme tune 
I can't remember what it was like, but apparently I liked the theme tune. It, uh, the Cinderella I like, was quite... The thing, I started imagining. watching it and I was like, maybe this won't be shit. And then I got to about halfway through and just started laughing. Just like, oh, good. <laughs> it sort of is. We need to do an episode soon where I don't hate one or more of the... Of oh, we interestingly, watching. going back to the podcast we did last time Sabrina and Saved by the Bell yeah did you notice anything about powers uh, right literally right at the beginning um, one of like Mario Lopez is in powers who's Mario Lopez he was in Saved by the Bell was he yeah <laughs> I saw that I was just like I just started laughing <laughs> I was just like if Joe notices that he's gonna hate the show <laughs> I don't think I noticed that because that would imply that I would have been paying attention to Save by the Bell. I don't recognise him at all. Well, who? What? What? Who was he in Powers? Oh, he played. He was himself in Powers. He's like um, an anchor for something. Was it Some like, entertainment uh, show. Oh, uh, he's just yeah. on the TV in the background. He's not like in it. In it. Okay. No, I, I didn't. I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm kind of glad saw, I didn't. I, I sort of really hoped you had, and I was just like, "Ah, oh, well, that's gonna, that's gonna really make you hate the show because you didn't, like, you did not like Saved by the Bell." Oh, he was AC Slater. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, that was it. so. Yeah, that's pretty much all I've got on Powers, to be honest. Like, it was just sort of bland and not very filling, like a poor Chinese takeaway. Do you think you'd watch? No. Anything? Any more of it? Um, probably not. Like, I, what about Lucky Man? Would you watch more of that? Or if it was on, I wouldn't turn it off. I don't think just because I'd be like, yeah, see where it goes. But I wouldn't go out of my way to watch it. That sounds pretty fair. What do you reckon? You gonna watch either? I one? reckon I might give them each one more episode to see if they get better. Yeah. But if they like, it would take a lot to turn me around on powers. Yeah. I think Lucky Man, I'd be an easier sell on. That's my sort of thing. I think Powers would have to turn into the boys for me to like it. I think it would just have to be better. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know what exactly it would need to do, but I think it would definitely need to do something. I think probably Maybe focus kill less that girl. on Christian Walker. And focus more on someone who's less of a dick. Yeah. Or just make him less of a dick. But maybe that's the point. Maybe his character's supposed to appear ridiculous. I reckon he's going to get his powers back at some point. Yeah, he will. I mean, it wasn't going to be episode one, was it? <laughs> that would be quite boring. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine then. Just oh, all I had to do was jump off a building, like I said in that story that I did <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> Sorry, I sneezed. But, I don't know. In terms of, like for both of them in terms of like the actors that were in them I was quite sort of surprised to see Eddie Izzard in Powers because I hadn't heard of anyone else who was in it <laughs> pretty much and I was just like wait Eddie okay I, I'm pretty sure there's probably someone from Game of Thrones in it but yeah that's because Game of Thrones has everyone in it that is actually yeah that's true so, yeah, um, thumbs down for both of them, really. Slightly less thumb down for Lucky Man, but thumb quite far down for Powers. Sounds pretty fair. Next time on the Co-Pilot Podcast, where hopefully I won't be Probably as Probably not going to hate them. Yeah, what we do next, we've got Vikings and Black Sails. Yeah, we've got Vikings and pirates. Are we really calling it Black Vikings? Is that a really good yeah. idea? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's going to be called. <laughs> Couldn't it be Viking sales? <laughs> no, I toyed with that. There's only three words to play with. <laughs> <laughs> Not Vikings Black, then. No, no, Black Vikings. <laughs> black Vikings. Uh, I, I think I read somewhere that Michael Bay is in some way involved with Black sales, so... That's going to be great. I've heard that it made people play Black Flag, so I'm hoping it's uh, something oh, really? like Black Flag. So, yeah, it could be cool. Okay, cool. Well, cheers.
we'll do this again in a bit. Yes. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye.